You know, there's been a lot of exciting advancements in the tackle industry over the last 20 years. One of the most exciting, though, is what's been happening lately with the lowly tip-up. This is an iFish Pro tip-up, and you can actually put your rod and reel right in it instead of hand bombing. Whoops! That was weird. This is Uncut Angling. Thanks for tuning in. This program is part entertainment and part education with some ridiculous. We are hot on YouTube and Facebook. Please join us on there for the latest. I'm Aaron Weeb, the host. We've got Jay Siemens doing a lot of the camera work and a fleet of other contributors working with us to give you the goods on whatever bites we're chasing. We don't script our shows and we don't stage hook sets. Strip our passion right down and it's exactly the same as yours. Unscripted, unstaged, uncut, this is Uncut Angling. Uncut Angling is proudly partnered with Alumacraft Fishing Boats, Humminbird Electronics, Minn Kota Trolling Motors, Shimano Reels, G Loomis Rods, Power Pro Line, and Jackal Lures. We're back up here, Kissing Lake, Keenanow Lodge. This is an amazing place. You can drive to it in northern Manitoba here. Lots of lakes in the area. It doesn't matter where you're based out of, everybody has the same iconic viewpoint of the species of lake trout through the ice. It's because the accessibility is so much more open in the winter. People can get out on big lakes, people can get into back lakes, and they can target lake trout where these fish are so hard to get at the rest of the year. 37 feet, Eric! How deep? 37 feet. Perfect. If anything, I'm gonna go a little bit shower to stay on top of it. I think it's gonna be, it might top out a bit higher than that. I'm here with my good buddy Manny Milas today. We are on a garbage moon phase. We don't have the luxury of picking out a perfect full moon, a perfect new moon, whatever your preference is, because a lot of it is the preference of the angler. It might not even be the preference of the species. But we're here when we can be here. We're targeting lake trout. Flag, 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 flag. Shut your face, Jay. What are you gonna do? How are you gonna film this? How are you gonna film this? Stop. Oh, I Stop. think we need to get on this. I think we need to get on this. Okay, okay go. Okay, go, go, go. He's still taking line? Yeah, he's taking line. Okay, here we go. Hit him hard. This is it, folks, right here. We got a big fish on. This could be a northern. We got a two of the on, which no northern in his right mind is going to refuse. But a big Laker is also going to take it, isn't it? How's it feel? Uh, not real big. Not real big? Nope. Okay. He's okay. He's starting to. I got weight now. I got, heavy? Yeah, I got weight now. You know, Absolutely. when the fish is far away and you got a lot of line out, it doesn't necessarily feel big right away. Yeah, you're kind of pulling them sideways, but this, he's starting to make an account of himself now. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's a heavy fish, eh? Yes, it is. <laughs> Look at the rod. Yes, it is. is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. This is why we put that second line in. It's a little bit of extra effort, but you can't jig two rods at Ooh. once. <laughs> oh, so there's man. no reason not to set a second line in. And we see this flag from a mile away. It's got the double, double-sided double feature on there, which is, I can't believe some of the tip-up companies got mono, haven't started to figure mono. out yet. Big fish, buddy? Okay, do you want me to do something? I do. Okay. Ooh, that's exactly what we're looking for, folks. Exactly. We're at the, the end of the month here. It's the end of March, which happens to be burbot breeding season, as evident by this fish who is in full progress <laughs> of that. Okay, let's get that hook out, Manny. Let's do it, Aaron, there we go. Uh oh, he's starting to struggle. We're gonna pop that hook out. Yeah, easily. We got a quick strike rig on here with that tulabee, so that was no problem. Yeah. This fish should not be capable of eating one of our tulabees. This this beautiful burret, which we're gonna tuck back in, it's a trophy fish, even if it's a, a you know, bit of a dog fish as it's nicknamed. We're gonna tuck him back in the water because this is a, a trophy fish by any standards. I'm just gonna put him back in. Okay, come on, buddy. He's all wrapped up in that hole there. It's amazing how their spine is so re reversible. But that is like a three foot burbot, which is a huge burbot anywhere in the world. I'm all covered in white stuff here. What is it, Aaron? Well, you know, it's a part of the birds and bees type deal, Manny. Oh, okay. But we're gonna get another tool in this hole for a big laker. <laughs> let's okay, go, buddy. Let's go. Oh, she goes. Oh, 
Ooh, big fish, big fish, big fish, big fish. Big, 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 big. When you're looking for a fishing boat, you want a boat that's tough, stylish, and has incredible fishability. Whether you're fishing large bodies of water, small inland lakes, or rivers, Alumacraft builds a boat with you and your family in mind. Alumacraft, it's what fishing is all about. This is a, this is, could be a, a good fish here. I got it on me too, Manny. Okay. He just came shooting off the bottom. It's probably a smaller chub. And this fish is all over me on the flash. I'm just gonna lift it up a little bit higher off bottom and keep it ripping here. Oh, he just bumped it again. Just smacking it lightly. Nice thing about this smaller bait is we've got bigger baits set on the, uh, the tip up so we know we can attract to the bigger fish. There he is. We can get smaller fish on this jigging bait here. This isn't gonna be a huge trout, but just to kill time between fish, that's fine. Nice to get some action. And that's not bad at all, folks. I mean, there's nothing wrong with filling in the spaces with a fish like this. So he cracked that rip and shad right there. Marble slug pops right out. Not a bad fish at all. I'm gonna get him right back in. You got fish still marking there, Manny? Oh! <laughs> Nailed me. <laughs> okay, I'm done. I'm done. That could have been bad. There's one coming up at me. That could have hit you between the eyebrows. Okay, come on, baby. She's on it. 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 I'm gonna come up. She's coming up with me. Oh, oh, hit her hard. Yeah, baby. She hit her hard, man. Little guy. Any weight on that one? Little guy. Hey, that fills in the boredom. As you can see, folks, a real monster, a real pristine, beautiful fish. It's all over the flash. Flag, right flag, now. flag. Flag, flag. It's the far one. It's the far one. Right on the corner, right on the end, right on the end. Okay, this is your rod, man. Oh, boy. Okay, it seems like he stopped. It was taking line when I walked out. He stopped running. Is it taking line? Now it's starting to take line again, yeah. Show there, he's going, the he's going, he's going, he's going. Show him the bosses, man. Yeah. We got him that nice. time. Oh, he's good. He's a good fish, Aaron. There's a lot of weight there. Cool, buddy. There's a bit of weight there, but Ooh, yeah. There's a bit of weight there. There's a bit of weight there. That's a good fish. Ooh, he's good. He's... He's not small, is he? Yeah, he knows he's hooked now. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Manny, any more cliche lines for us now? Hey guys, he knows he's hooked now. Look at him go. Oh, there we go. We got a good run. There we go. Come yeah, on. buddy. Right this on. This is the beauty of having these extra lines out, is we could easily be just jigging with our, our wraps and our spoons and stuff, but... Something to keep us busy. <laughs> it takes a couple extra seconds to put a set line in with a big bait. This is a good fish, you guys. And this is where we're going to get our home run fish on these set lines. It won't be on the... It probably won't be on the jigging bait. <laughs> right. Because now, yeah, now I just got weight. Oh boy, down he okay. goes again. I'm gonna swivel around the other side and get that slush out of the hole for you, bud. Okay, thanks. You always wanna be ready for anything when this fish comes up. Oh boy. Not one peeling run though, Manny. Not no, one. not really, well, here we go. No, that wasn't a peeling run. That was no. a burbot kind of wrapping in circles. <laughs> so what we have here, folks, is likely... A trophy burbot. A trophy burbot. <laughs> We're talking in that upper 30 range. Stuck in the bottom of the hole? No, no. It's just weight. This is gonna be like a 38 inch burbot. Yeah, I don't know what kind of size we got here, but it's just, oh boy. It is just heavy. It's gotta be close, eh? Yeah. Come on. We've seen the bobber stop, so we know we go, we're real we close go, to this here fish. Go, here Here's the swivel, oh. which means we're within like 30 inches of this fish. Ooh, okay. Like that. I'm just gonna touch your line lightly here, man, just to help guide him up. Okay. I see him. It's a uh, it's a lake trout. It's a oh. huge lake trout, Manny. Good, good, good. Oh. Unbelievable. Oh, yes. yes. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, yes. this was me totally wrong. This is a huge <laughs> lake trout. <laughs> you like that 100% wow. confidence? I was so <laughs> sure. <laughs> right on. 
Ooh. I like all those predictions that it's for sure, yeah, it's for <laughs> sure going to be a burbot. And then out comes a nice big Laker. You see he's got one hook right in the lip. Oh, other hook came right out. Awesome. You can see he's still got that, that meal in there, that big burbot. He ate the Cisco that we dropped down there. <laughs> What a glutton, eh? Yeah, and obviously still quite hungry. We're gonna get this fish right back in the water. Huge peck, huge body. <laughs> Look at the size of that tail, Manny. It spans the entire ten inch hole. <laughs> Just hold that it for is a second. Awesome. Gotta get his strength, especially with these big fish. You just gotta take a little bit of extra time with them. Make sure they're good to go. There she goes. Big kick. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Woo. I called it wrong apparently. You get yeah. a huge fish like that that's eating a huge bait and it had another big bait in its mouth and uh, apparently they fight a little bit sluggish. Thank goodness for that extra line. I mean, that's that's a home run fish right there. I mean, we're going to get a lot more trout than that, but uh, I couldn't have worked out better. Not at all. Okay, we need another bait for this, buddy. Let's get this line back in and get back to jigging. Oh, yeah. Hi, my name is Ken Kansas. I'm a fisheries biologist at the province of Manitoba. Catch release fishing has come a long, long way. It needs to go further. We need to realize there's so much more to it than just putting that fish back in the water. Something I like to use when handling fish is a glove. This is a cotton glove, real inexpensive. I like to use a glove for two main reasons. One, you get a really good tight grip on that fish. You want a tight grip, reduces stress time removing the hook. And the other, doesn't matter whether it's a wool glove, cotton glove, or rubber glove, keep it wet. Protects the slime layer on fish. So the goal is to release these fish right, properly. Not just to watch it swim away, but there's a realistic chance that that fish can be caught again one day. Here's Emmanuel with a marvelous 47 and a half inch pike caught under a tip up while fishing with the Fair family. Two years later, almost to the day, Luke Fair caught that amazing fish again. It measured the same at 47 and a half inches and was caught on nearly the exact setup and within 20 feet of the hole where it was previously landed. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> fly, fly, fly! Nanny! Oh! He's, he's humming, man. This is that same one. What do we got here, Aaron? I don't know, it's your same line. Take her. It's still taking line. I hit him right away with that quick strike. I don't think it's gonna be a problem. Alright, here we go. We got one out. Got him! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Woo! Two in a row. This just went off. Oh yeah. How does this one feel? Is it another heavy. burbot? Another heavy one. Yeah, it's another burbot for sure. 100% folks. <laughs> oh wow. Horse? Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> That's the peeling run I was talking about Woo! right there. <laughs> That's what fishing's all about right there. This is everything. This is why we're staked out on this point here. You know eventually Ooh. a huge fish is going to come along. But what it keeps doing is it keeps getting on the yeah, he said. It's a big, big fish. Like, I can't pull it. I keep trying to get its head up in the hole and it won't. You didn't tighten down your drag at all, really? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> it, I don't here think we go. it. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This fish is right here now. You can see the water's bobbing up and down. Yep. Oh, yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! It's actually a bit smaller than that last one, but I mean, awesome fish. Good fight. <laughs> Crazy good fight. Let me see if I can pop those hooks Yeah, absolutely. And that one's out. Boom. Look at those skilled hands at work here. And it's out just like that. We got everything all ready to go here. We have the tape there. We're not gonna measure this one. It's probably like a, what do you think, man? He's like a 34 inch fish or so. Yeah. We want this fish so out I. for the minimum amount of time. That's a good plan. This fish has tons of energy still. Goodbye. Just gonna get this re-rigged here. These are the Cisco's we're using, Tulabies, and that's probably about the smallest one that I'd even use for these trout. We're really trying to key in on that big bite, as I've said. Monofilament quick strike rig. I got the two number four trebles here, and the second one's just tied to the bend of the first one. So I'm just gonna hook this one kind of near the back of the bait, hook the other one near the front of the bait. And one of the key things here, I actually poke them back out again. It's very conducive for that hook ripping out of the bait on a hook set. Do you see how quickly those hooks both just popped out 
and that way those hooks are going to transfer into the game fish as opposed to staying locked down on this bait here. It's easy enough to sink down to the bottom. This tip-up we're using is an iFish Pro tip-up and it's kind of a combination of a rod slash tip-up whereas you don't actually have a spool of line on this tip-up. It's just a rod holder but it's got the flag to alert you to a bite. It sits over the hole real nice and covers it up. So what I've done here is I got a bobber stop on the line and I've got this little clip here that slides onto the line and it's a real simple system. It just goes underneath this mechanism. I flip the flag down and then I've got my rod in the rod holder here. I have to bail open. When the fish takes the line, it just pulls on that clip, flag goes up, line free spools down. Big fish is just running, 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 running. He can take as much line as he wants. He's not feeling anything. We walk up, pick up the rod, close the bail, tighten up the slack, lean into him, and game on. I can see the rod just going. coming around him. Oh, there we go. I did not hit him hard, but I'm in my backing. I want to get that backing rod on the spool first. Look at this, this is mono. I've got how's your a ton of 10 pound power pro on this reel. I'm back on the bottom of the hole. This could be my robber stuff knot. Do you want to pop that off? Yeah. I think it's my robber stuff knot. Manny's making a pretty big yeah. sacrifice here. Did you touch something? Yeah. Because you sure got him going. Especially at late ice here, you get that ice that's way softer. Thanks, Manny. No problem, bro. That looks wet. <laughs> and your, your line digs into the bottom of the ice there, and any knot you have, bobber stop, anything is going to get caught on the ice there, and this fish is getting close now. Ooh, I think it's a good one. Look at that sacrifice. Look at the water dripping out of this man's sleeve. I don't mind taking one for the team. <laughs> I hear, I feel him hitting the ice, Manny. Or maybe that's my swivel. He's There's close, my swivel. Oh, There's my we swivel. We got mono. We got mono. There he is. Oh, it's oh. a good one. It's a good one. Here comes his head. Here comes his head. You ready? It's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes! Oh! oh wow. wow! Yes! Gotta love that, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> good job. Another big trout. Grab the pliers. Let's pop those hooks out. Easy. There we go. No Perfect. Problem. You can see, even with the bait, this fish was hooked relatively deeply, but with uh, having the pliers ready there, Manny was able to get those hooks out right away. And we're just gonna get him right Time. back home. Yeah, buddy. right on. This fish came out of about 35 feet of water, oh. which is a typical location for him. Goodbye. A lot of people think super deep water, and they look for the deepest water in the lake, and we've been spending time in... 35, 25 feet of water. Exactly, 45 of the deepest. This fish was, like Manny said, in about 35 feet of water. We're fishing a real gradual point here. It's a feeding shelf. Really? It's basically a huge feeding shelf. A lot of people want those steep drop-offs and everything, and you can catch fish on those, but what you catch on a bigger spot like this is more fish and bigger fish, and that's what we've set ourselves up with to do today, and maybe we'll get a couple more bites yet, but that's right. uh, that's a good way to end if that's how it does end for today, and we'll right start on, back buddy. up tomorrow. <laughs> I'm sold, dude. <laughs> there it is. Dude, check that perch out. It feels... Yeah. Uh, did we ever do a mic check? No, it'll be fine. Right. It's probably good right here. <laughs> <laughs> that auger just cuts like... No ice hardly. Yeah. I mean, we've still got maybe 20 inches of ice, 24 inches of ice, but it is just falling apart as we speak. These are end times on the ice. Very choppy, look at that. Nothing to it. Breaking off in shards. We've got Levi Christensen with me here today. We're looking for some slob perch. And uh, yeah, got a line of holes drilled here from shallow to deep. It's important when you start off fishing for almost anything to kind of start at one end of the spectrum. So either start as deep as you think you're gonna fish or as shallow as you're gonna fish. And it just gives you a starting point and an idea of where you wanna move from there. So I've pushed right against the reeds there. And now we're probably in about eight, nine feet yep. out here. And what we're doing is we're gonna set down our, our first two tip-ups here to get our uh, set lines down and then we're going to be moving hole to hole here to try to get those active fish to bite now. That's what we'll be doing. So we got that got that minnow down there and we'll set that just like that with the bale open. Exactly. Doesn't slow us down at all to get nope. the set lines in. and Keep uh, it moving. Let's get the flashes out, buddy. Yep. Fish coming in on me right away, Levi. I just dropped in this hole, it's a nice steady mark. Almost like a pike or a walleye would be a lot more 
stable and not flickering all over the place like a perch is usually. Yeah. Big mark, big mark. Here we go, big perch. <laughs> oh, huge perch, Levi, huge, huge perch. perch. Oh, oh my Dude, God. Dude, check that perch out. <laughs> that is what we came for. Holy smokes. He smacked that, that bait pretty much right away. I told Did you, it? like he came on the screen and it oh, looked so like a walleye. Like, yeah. Look at this steady red mark down there, yeah. Jeez. So many perch when you're fishing for them anywhere, they come on the screen, they're all flickering like a little green mark on your flasher and they'll kind of go back and forth. And this just was a nice steady mark. That is huge. Yeah, we're not gonna <laughs> keep anything in that size, so I'm gonna put them right back in. Look at the back, man. It's thick. Tall. There's the belly on it. Heavy. There he goes. Yeah! Oh, man, like that. Hopefully it's, it's like that all day. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so I got that one, this Lindy Ratlin flyer spoon. Not a huge spoon at all. I just have a tip with a chunk of minnow head there. And it has a, a very similar action to a buckshot, a buckshot spoon by Northland, except I find this has a lot more of a, kind of a slide to the side with that, the wings on either side of the spoon. Whereas the Northland one really rocks on the spot. What we're doing with the tip up is we're trying to target the bigger fish, you know, by using the bigger minnow here. Oh, flag, right away, right away. Hey, hey. Oh, big run, big run. Oh yeah, there it is. There we go. Right away. Good fish? Nice fish, yep, Aaron. Yeah, that's a nice <laughs> fish, buddy. Nice perch, huh? Look at that. Oh, yeah. That's what we were looking for. <laughs> I just set that tip up up. Yeah. Like, it was literally down for two minutes and it hit that. That was more of a candidate for the jig rod. But it was. <laughs> we'll take him on the set yep. line, too. See how deep he's got that minnow just instantly. That's that's a big minnow, eh? That like is. the biggest minnow out of the tub. Yep. Carry up hemostat here. I'm just gonna get him right back in the water. Nice big wide body. There it goes. Fish is in great shape. Cool, so buddy. You better set this tip up again. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. Uncut Angling is proudly partnered with Alumacraft Fishing Boats, Humminbird Electronics, Minn Kota Trolling Motors, Shimano Reels, G Loomis Rods, Power Pro Line, and Jackal Lures. <laughs> How is that even possible? Just shut up. I really wish I had nothing to do with this at this point. How's that fluoro treating you, man? You know, there's been a lot of technological advancements in fishing, and this is not one of them. You ruined my rod, and now I gotta fish with just line. My hands are gonna get burnt on one of these big girls. <laughs> <laughs>